I want to introduce our second segment uh, uh, regarding recent and ongoing clinical trials on the use of second generation ALK and EGFR inhibitors in non-small cell lung cancer. There are now eight separate phase three trials in either phenotypically selected or mutation positive EGFR uh, patients that have shown a clear-cut response and PFS benefit for either gefitinib or lotinib or, and now recently approved afatinib compared to standard chemotherapy. We've also seen major headway uh, for patients with, with uh, uh, translocations uh, of ALK uh, with a major improvement both in response and PFS for crisotinib versus standard uh, second line uh, chemotherapy, again, in non-small cell. So these agents are firmly entrenched in our therapeutic portfolio. But there has been major development, certainly in the last uh, 24 months, for second and even third generation inhibitors. And I want to start off with the uh, the ALK class. That always comes second, so this time we'll uh, discuss it first. Ben, if you can uh, tell us uh, just some uh, bullet points about uh, the LDK378 drug, which now has a name, seritinib, um, in uh, ALK positive uh, non-small cell. Yeah, just to echo your sentiments, Corey, you know, the ability to deliver a targeted drug to an actionable mutation is very exciting for us, but unfortunately and inevitably, as we know, these patients progress. And I think the new paradigm is coming up with newer therapies that uh, can target these resistant mechanisms, uh, which uh, is responsible for patients progressing. And one of the drugs that's recently uh, been presented is the LDK378, the seritinib. It's a highly potent uh, second-generation ALK inhibitor. Uh, I think Alice Shaw recently presented her phase one uh, data with more than 100 patients. Uh, and interestingly, the response rate was around 60%, uh, not only for the crizotinib naive patients, uh, but also, uh, surprisingly, for the crizotinib resistant patients. And I think that's where there's a lot of excitement, the ability to uh, deliver this drug for patients who have failed crizotinib or who have progressed on crizotinib remains very exciting for us. Um, the PFS in that study was uh, close to nine months. And as I said before, with the immunotherapeutic approaches, you know, in, uh, importantly, this drug is fairly well tolerated. Uh, the uh, incidence of grade uh, three, four adverse events is relatively low, and it gives it gives us more options for our patients. So I think uh, I'm very excited uh, about this drug, and we'll be participating in the clinical trial uh, at our institution with this drug. Although the Novartis compound does feature a fair amount of GI toxicity. That's cr that is correct. Yeah. Perhaps a bit more than we've seen with yeah. uh, crisotinib. Mm -hmm. yeah, our group has been involved uh, in the development of the AP26113, the Ariad compound. Probably not as far along as the uh, Novartis compound, but similar scenario. Uh, major activity, 50, 60 percent response rates. Second line patients whose disease has progressed uh, on crisotinib after a period of response. A uh, paucity of data so far in um, crisotinib naive or out positive uh, treatment naive, uh, but that's now developing. I think the other major aspect which uh, has been seen both with this drug and also with the Novartis compound is uh, CNS penetration, folks with uh, growing uh, CNS lesions uh, who may or may not have uh, had uh, prior brain radiation are actually responding to major shrinkage uh, of uh, CNS uh, uh, abnormalities. And at least with the Ariad experience, nine out of 10 patients had uh, significant shrinkage. Um, Heather, if you want to comment uh, briefly on the on Genentech compound, which I believe also has a name now, Electinib. Electinib, right. So uh, that's the uh, Chugai Roche Genentech compound now, Electinib. Um, we had a lot of excitement about that compound at ASCO this year, uh, where we heard uh, data from uh, Professor Nakagawa from Japan, where there was an over 90% response rate for crizotinib naive patients who had ALK positive tumors. So that was really exciting. Um, and then at the World Lung Meeting, we heard data about the patients who had previously had crizotinib and had then, then progressed. And in those patients receiving electinib, the response rate was 60%. Um, and that 60% number seems to keep coming up for these uh, next generation ALK inhibitors for patients who have previously had crizotinib and then progressed. Mm -hmm. And so it's uh, looking like a very active compound. I haven't um, personally had experience with it. Uh, we've worked more with some of the other drugs. Um, but I, you know, we're all watching that with enthusiasm and, and really encouraging data this year. This is sort of unprecedented. There's really no other, and it's not yet true, although it may emerge uh, for EGFR mutations, where you have second generation compounds with response rates quite this high. Certainly right. for EGFR until very recently, mm -hmm. the best we had seen perhaps was 30 or 40 percent for yeah. a combination of fatinib and cetuximab. But uh, um, to see 
resist verified um, reproducible multi-institutional uh, studies uh, generating response rates of 50, 60 percent or more mm -hmm. is uh, quite gratifying. Yeah. Mark, how are we going to develop these compounds? What would be the uh, proper studies and are they ongoing? Well, let's, let's remember that crizotinib started its life as a MET inhibitor. And, and the observation was uh, that it worked in an ALK uh, translocated mm -hmm. patient, so it got off the ALK exit and got approved. And I, I think, you know, for people who know a lot more about drug development than I do, uh, n no one ever felt crizotinib was the most potent ALK inhibitor. And in fact, the LDK drug is about 50-fold more potent as uh, <coughs> these sorts of things. You, you made the comment about uh, the CNS activity, and I, mean, the, I think the question is an open question. Is that a pharmacopoeia? kinetic benefit or is that a potency benefit? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we, we know the answer to that quite yet. Um, but the other issue is, uh, you know, I, I've always been struck by that uh, electinib data with a 93% mm -hmm. uh, response rate. Um, you know, they, I think on that trial they had a different um, threshold of fish testing. So they may have enriched the population mm -hmm. to a better degree. And I think this is a tough assay. Yeah for our molecular pathologists to get right. And, mm -hmm. and, and I constantly have discussions about uh, fish ALK results with uh, Dr. Dasik at our institution about what this means and so on. And Theoretically, 15% so or more of cells have to show uh, Yeah, separation. but it's also the pattern of uh, the signals and these sorts of things. Um, uh, we, we've had several people who have been in the 20%, but the, and I can't speak authoritatively on this, but I've been advised by my, I had re recently had a patient with a K-RAS mutation and was ALK positive. And um, the pathologist uh, said, uh, we think the ALK is not a true positive and these are the reasons why. And this patient's course will be dominated by K-RAS disease. I saw this patient as a second opinion. And in fact, the outside oncologist had given two months of crizotinib, which the patient just grew right through.